Hi, good morning. Hello. Um, I've started this live video. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to add um, our guest and my bestie. Jessica, and we'll wait for her. Hi. Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Grab your drink of choice. Mine is coffee. Today it's coffee. Mid-afternoon, it's probably a matcha, but right now it's coffee. <laughs> um, hold on, here she's coming. Hello, how's life? Somebody's asked me, how's life? Life is good, life is good. Oh, here we go. It works. Hi. Hi. Just this, this camera so I can see you. Hi, love. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good afternoon it's afternoon for you. It's afternoon for me. Okay, I know. I was just saying, I'm having coffee. What are you having? <laughs> Water. Water. You know, I, I, um, Eduardo was lecturing me last night that I was drinking too much water and that you can drink too much water. That sounds like something Christopher might say. Yeah. What is this? What the hell? You, you can have too much of anything. Yeah. You can have too much of anything. You what? You can have too much of anything. I think. I mean, I guess so, but not I don't feel like I'm drinking too much water. love. Not too, not too much, too love. much love. I thank you so much, Jess, for jumping on with me and with everybody. I'm so happy to see you. And um, and uh, I think everyone that probably is showing up knows my love for you and our long, long, long uh, friendship. And those of you that somehow have not been. Um, not been uh, around or don't know, but um, you know, Jessica is amongst many things, not only an amazing actor who has been on so many things, but now last week popped back up on Grey's, which, you know, was your longstanding series. How many years did you do? 10, 11, 12? 10, 10, 10, 10 seasons. 10 seasons. Oh my gosh. That's what I thought. Wow. I can remember when you started it. And, but she's also a mama of four amazing children and she's the bestest friend in the whole wide world. And one of the things that I definitely want to dig into today is we want to talk about what it means to have longstanding friendships and not just female friendships, but all friendships and just, just, you know, you're everything to me. So, um, so thank you. I know, you know, Jess and I, now that she lives on the, on, uh, on the East coast, we get our, our check-ins are either in our car dropping off, yeah. meat, right? Or, or when you get to fly in or we get to sort of have these, um, have these little like powwow yes. moments a day or two or an hour have, or whatever it is. Yeah. You have to be a little more deliberate, right? With your friends that might be a, a three hour time difference away. You just have to get more deliberate. But I've actually found that, that with, you know, in, in, in different relationships, you actually, I find that having to be more deliberate actually can really actually, can add more because you act, you really, you don't, you don't take it for granted, right? You, you know that you have to seek it out. You have to make an appointment for it. You have to show up. You have to do all that. Um, but yeah, the three hour time difference is funny, right? It's like, you're, you're just having the morning sun and I'm getting blasted with the afternoon sun in the back <laughs> of my house. <laughs> like the place that I sort of work during the day, it, it is funny. Midday, you just get blasted but by the way by the way my family's now gotten used to these last three years that you've been away that like jess is coming to town everybody stop jess is coming to town i'm glad I'm going, that they whatever, feel the same way, way that i do calendar is out i'm i'm there i'm showing up like, it doesn't matter it i was like oh, wait hold on i'm like see ya they and feel out. <laughs> the same way i do i'm like everybody stop i'm here <laughs> You are. You just go well, up, you're like, I'm coming tomorrow. I know. At this time. Sometimes I'll be like, wait, so what do you have for dinner tomorrow night? And you'll be like, I have a plan. And I'll be like, what? 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 Why wouldn't you cancel that plan? <laughs> <laughs> it's totally like that. It's, it's totally like that. Um, and by the way, it was so much fun that when you were here, when was it? Like a month ago or already? It feels like a few weeks ago when we went out to all these Oscar parties and did all this kind of you know, fun party our, hopping that we used to do in our, in our 20s. It what? In our stretch limo. In our stretch limo. So, so. You'll find very yeah. many of those these days, but we had one. 
we might, yeah, we might have to share one of those really funny pictures, but a stretch limo came to pick us up and we're talking like 80s prom down the block. And we're right. and also to be clear, we didn't order it. We didn't order a stretch limo. We just got a stretch limo and it was sold as an upgrade. Like, look at you guys. You guys get a stretch limo. I was like, oh, dear lordy. Are and we going to see an emerging? You were super hot in this dress that you had on. You were, it was very Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, like you know, <laughs> Scarface. Like it was, is that the one? It's Scarface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. She, you looked so hot. I mean, the bangs, the bangs, the hair, the low color. I mean, <laughs> Jessica showed up with the stretch limo on the dress and I was like, oh no, no. It was so good. <laughs> a so stretch good. limo plus that dress was a little bit, I know, I wish I could give you guys a visual, but we were, none of the parties were as fun as just that. That's yeah. all we needed. We needed the yeah. stretch limo and you and that well, dress. But that, that's a nice <laughs> intro into the friendship vibe because isn't it sort of true that sorry it's always been true for me that on some level the getting like when i used to get ready with my girlfriends for a party or to go out or whatever almost always the getting ready was more fun than the event right it's just true. about relationship and being with your people and having a little bit of fun yeah, it's, or a lot so true when i see lucia getting ready with her friends they always say the same thing yeah they all get together they all do the whole getting ready part then they're out the door yeah. and they're back like an hour I said, wait, all of that for this one hour? They're like, yeah, it was more fun getting ready. It's true yeah. though. It's true. Is that a girl? That's like a girl. I mean, girls love that. Girls I don't know. love the whole. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like some guys need to show up and say that they like getting ready for us. <laughs> sure. I'm open to it. Well, hold on. Have we, have we even discussed this whole thing with boys and their cologne right now? I don't have that happening in my house. Oh, Tell my me God. more. Oh, Tell me God. more. Because I don't cologne. know that I could withstand that. There's a cologne thing going on with boys. Does anybody know about this? Because it's like, I, I don't know, I guess like, you know, TikTok or whatever has blown up this kind of cologne thing. And so boys are starting to wear oh. cologne, like, which is fine. But, but we had a funny moment where Leonardo wanted to try some cologne. So Eduardo gave him like a half a bottle of something that he had and uh, said, here, you, you can have this one. And then Leo went out with his friends and they all were trying cologne. He wanted to buy one that he thought was him. And Eduardo said, no, 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 you've chosen it. You pick one and that's the one you stick to. And he was like, what? All my friends have lots of different colognes. They wear different ones. Well, <laughs> Eduardo, I, I'm gonna venture a guess that that was spoken like a true Italian because I lived in Italy for a minute and I can report and my experience was that Italians were one cent kind of guys. <laughs> and, and, and it was all the same scent <laughs> in whatever year it was that I was in my junior year abroad. And it was really, it was, it, yeah, yeah. It was strong it, and a lot. The Italian men really like you though, Jess, because that always reminds me of the time <laughs> that you were very pregnant. Do you remember? No, I I don't remember this story. Is it going to embarrass me? Pregnant, and you got hit on by this guy who couldn't tell when he saw you for whatever reason. And then you were kind of like, "I'm really pregnant right now." Yeah, that's yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> so embarrassing. Do you remember that? Where were we? Where it we? was when you came to visit me in Geneva. Yeah. It was like you went yeah, to Italy yeah. for a little thing, but you were seven months. I mean, you were <laughs> far along. Yeah. And yep. You were looking at him going, is this really happening? Wow. And then what are you doing? Going, and he yeah. didn't care. He nope. did not care. I do vaguely remember that. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> that's when you just, that's when you know how to draw very strong boundaries. <laughs> you learn to draw boundaries. <laughs> I just remember, I, I just remember you being like, oh my gosh, that was really strange. Like I, I was looking at him and he just didn't stop. He kind of just didn't care. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're embarrassing, man. I don't know how I answered that. Okay. So, anyways, let's talk let's about talk. friendship. Let's talk about friendship. So, how, how we have been friends for many years. We don't have to say how many years, but so many years. And we met, when we initially met, people had kind of um, said, oh, you know, you remind me a little, you remind me of Jessica Kepscher, or you remind me of Sasha, right? Yeah. It was a little bit of like, but you can tell it. Well, no, tell I. 
I was ever. doing my I was doing my first show ever, um, and it got picked up for I don't know twelve episodes, and I was working with um, Vicky Davis, who was one of your good friends from SC, and she, every time that we would. Particularly if I'd made her laugh or something, she'd be like, God, you're exactly like Sasha. And I was like, I don't know who Sasha is. And she would be like, and then it would happen again. She's like, you're just exactly like Sasha. And I was like, I, again, this person, Sasha, I don't know them. And no one's like me. I'm my only me. Who is like, <laughs> who is this person? Who is this person? So I remember that being sort of the, the groundwork that was laid. And then, and then, um, I don't know, there probably were a couple other people. And I, it turns out, I think that it was also happening for you on some level. And then I remember going to audition for a movie and I remember sitting in the waiting room and wait, do you remember who came first? I think you, you were already there because I, when I went to go sign in, I saw your name and I looked in the, I looked at the, you know, the group of young ladies that were waiting. And I was like, who's Sasha? Are you Sasha? And you were like that, uh, yeah, it's me. And I remember being like, you and I, it's Jessica Capshaw. And you were like, what? And then I was like, afterwards, we're having coffee. <laughs> we're going out, we're doing something. You, you were like, we should meet. We yeah. Should meet. yeah. Yeah. We did, yeah. and then we went for coffee. Yes, we went for coffee. We went for coffee. And, um, and while we were having coffee, we both got a phone call that we had gotten a job. Well, no, I got, job. got a call, oh. but you got a job. I got a call back <laughs> for the one that we just got in for. It was good news. As yeah, I did do it, and it I did end up doing that job. So we were yes. both sitting on a bench, I remember, with our coffees, and we got yeah. good news, and yeah. we were like, that's great. Maybe we're each other's lucky charm. That exactly. was amazing. I know, um, on, Larch on Larchmont Boulevard in, in LA. Yeah. I remember, I remember. But you know, one of the things, Jess, that's so, um, that like when I think of our years of friendship, that's that, and then, then I look at, you know, our daughters, and you sort of go, you're watching, you know, little girls in fourth grade and fifth grade start to become you know, mean and, and, and whatever, it becomes like this thing where girls are a certain way with each other, right? My feeling about that now in watching my daughter growing up and, 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 and also just my own experience as an adult woman and having long standing friendships like yours is that, you know, we are, we're complicated creatures, us ladies, like we have a lot of feelings and we are growing into um, ourselves and our own comfort with ourselves. And I feel like we naturally put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Pressure that I just don't see always like boys doing. You know, I don't think that they judge each, each other the same. They don't look at another guy and go, well, you know, I don't have the hair like he does, or I don't have, maybe they do, but not, I feel like we're, um, we have, I mean, even just through puberty, we go through it earlier than boys do. So naturally that teen period is a bit uh, more, um, wrought with feelings, right? But what I find beautiful is that when you, it, it is so important, female friendships are so important, all friendships are important, but female to female friendships are so important because when you find your person, um, understanding that being completely selfless and, and only, like, like I, I always say to you, we were never gray. There's like, you're you're for somebody, you're not for somebody, there's like a black and white thing, but like gray is like, you're sometimes for them, you're sometimes not for them. I don't think that's friendship. I think real friendship is you're always for that person. Oh, it's, yeah. Like, like, there's no like, oh, like, you know, they got this thing over me and I'm somehow like jealous about that. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, I don't, I don't think that way. And I feel like you and I never had any of that. Like people sort of wonder, oh, you're both actors. You probably go up for similar things, but we don't operate like that ever. No, but I mean, listen, I can only speak for myself here, but I find that, that I mean, just on that topic, right? Jealousy, I find that, you know, jealousy for, for obvious reasons gets, you know, painted in a very negative way and it gets sort of demonized, like jealousy will take you down. And I do think that comparison is so dangerous. Um, but we all feel it. Like we all, yeah. we all feel jealousy or we all think like there've been times in our careers where, you know, things were going better for you. Or, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I think what I'm getting to is like the, no the normalization of a feeling of like, oh, I, I would like to have that too, but never I want to take that from that person. So for me, I think that that's sort of an important distinction only because I think especially, you know, as we're growing and evolving, we can be really 
hard on ourselves about thinking, oh my gosh, am I not a good friend? Cause I don't want my, or I, I, I'm, I'm jealous of something my friend has. And it's like, well, no, but that's normal. I think that you're, you're, I think you wouldn't be feeling your feelings if you didn't think, um, I'm, I, I, I like, I'd like that too. Um, but it's how you process them and then how you speak about it to yourself and to others that I think is the most important piece, which is like, again, you, there have been times where, I mean, I remember a good solid period being like, man, she's getting so many auditions and she's got these opportunities or this, she just got this job and that's so cool. And again, thinking like, I would love to have that too, but never instead of her. And so I think that right. that's the relational piece of friendship when you know you have it good is that again, you are always for that person. And so you can celebrate the, the good things that are happening in their life. And at the same time, want them for yourself yeah. too. Well, and I also think like, despite even aside from just career stuff, I mean, I feel like, you know, we we've been through, you know, um, marriage and children and you know, parenting and, and watching all the different evolutions and transitions and some, some friends just stay on that ride together. Right. And, and, and it does take, it does take a lot of like, um, I don't know. I feel like it takes a lot of, uh, a little bit how I feel even just in my marriage, which is just like, you love a person unconditionally that whatever they're going through or whatever you're going through, you hope that they're going to have the patience and love to just forgive and let you move through your thing and, um, and that they'll be there. Right? Like we, we hope that that's the case because hopefully the, the friendship and that relationship means more than any kind of petty moment of anything that's maybe not as important. Yeah. I mean, how do, how do you think about that? Like, how do, like, if you talk about longevity of friendships, is there something that you feel is you've learned or that you think? Totally. Yes. I think that the first thing that comes to mind is, is probably with all, but, but, but important in friendship, which is assuming positive intent. You know, so often you can you get stuck in a mindset or, or you see people that are constantly thinking the worst and, assuming that someone meant to hurt them by something or meant to exclude them or meant to, you know, not consider them or didn't read their mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, you know, again, we're, we're human beings, right? So we have that protective instinct to be like, Rah! like, no, that person, no, thank you. And out and, uh, and avoid and, you know, hurt first, if you feel like you're going to get hurt or hurt back a million times more, whatever that thing is, whatever your adaptation is or whatever your, you know, what, whatever behavior usually comes to the top when something like that happens. But I think that in work and in friendships, friendships at work, friendships in, in your real life, marriage, your children, all of it, like I find that everything is made better by assuming positive intent. I don't have people in my life for no reason. Um, and, and I, and I, and I think that when I, when I get curious, if someone's hurt my feelings, when I get curious instead of mad, um, <laughs> I have a better result. Like, mm -hmm. cause most often you're going to say like, did you mean to hurt me? And most often the person's going to say no. And hopefully they can explain why you actually shouldn't be hurt at all. Um, but maybe they can explain why they did the thing that hurt you and then you can move on. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think that it's, it's, I think we're all pretty quick to, I don't think it's, a, it's not a bad thing. I think it just needs to be adjusted. We all just sort of sometimes think the worst. <laughs> and you're raising three daughters. I have one. Yeah, 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 <laughs> one. yeah. yeah. But I yeah. have to that one, and you have the three. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you're an angel. A goddess yeah. of, you know, sunshine that has to sort of like, you know, beam through and like, you know, and listen, your girls are the sweetest human beings ever so they don't you know even even if you have girls that are completely let's say um well adjusted and the, their character is not one of you know drama 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 it doesn't matter girls are growing and there's always that kind of thing that we have to as women um and as their as their mothers be um helping them helping them raise their self-esteem in a way that they make choices that are good for them and authentic to them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you have been 
because you've been there every step of the way with Lucia. Um, you have been such a guide with that because, um, you know, we learn differently. Like my mom, you know, came to this country when she was 17. Like how she was taught was not necessarily stuff she was putting in me. A lot of stuff you and I both had yeah. to like kind of figure out on our own you know we were both only children for a long time i mean you're definitely not but you were until you were yeah yeah, yeah yeah and and um and so there's so many things now that i think like you know we have to intentionally teach our daughters so that we can in some way help them move through that in a more you know in a stronger way i mean everyone's got their path but you know yeah yeah, no, I mean, and we, and we, and I mean, I think in that world, the strongest thing we can do is, is live that, right? That it could be the role yeah. models. I mean, I find that talking to them about the thing is far less impactful than living the thing. Um, yeah. My, my yeah. girls, my girls made me laugh really hard because they were, there was, <laughs> there was a, um, not nefarious, but a, a, a character in our lives that had sort of like done a couple things that were a little bit naughty. And I had sort of gone, you know what I'm assuming a positive intent also like when you when someone shows you a, how they can behave, then it's, it's then your choice to just not be with that person as much. And my girls were talking about it. And they were like, they were talking about me to each other. And one of them said, like, I we just saw, you know, so and so and, and mom's talking to her right now. And the other one was like, Oh, that one is just so not nice. And I bet you that mom's just being nice to her anyways. <laughs> the other daughter was like, yeah, she is. She's fully being nice to her. She's really, she's, she, she, she really, and it was just making me laugh because I was, they were watching me live my, my truth, which was, Hey, you know what? Like keep your side of the street clean. Yeah. Someone wants yeah. to behave like yeah. that. Someone wants to be unkind. Someone wants to be naughty. Like they're, they're showing you who they are. You, you don't need to be in a relationship with them, but you don't need to be nasty. You don't need to be naughty back. You don't need to, why? Like that just sort of pollutes your, your world. Um, so I think that that is definitely, I think with them. And I think that they see, you know, I also talk to them a lot. I mean, they're, you know, the, I'm talking about the 13 and the 11 year old and they are constantly talking about what 13 and 11 year olds talk about, which is like friend Before. groups. <laughs> no, not Sephora. No, friend groups, like association, which is so like neurobiologically important at this age, which is like, where do I belong? Um, who wants me and who do I want back? And where does that fit into all the things? And how do I make sure? I mean, I remember being like with your, you know, with your lunch tray being like, where do I sit? Right. It's important. You have to feel belonging in order to thrive and to grow, which obviously is so important when you're at school, because you've got a lot of other things to think about. Like, studying math <laughs> yeah math. um english whatever right and so feeling safe is so important and so we talk about friend groups all the time and um obviously that is appropriate for them given that i'm not in high school or middle school or elementary school i always say i don't i'm not in a friend group i don't i don't have a click i don't have a a thing because i enjoy so many different kinds of people and I don't need a click yeah. anymore. I don't, I'm not in, I'm not in the same position. So I can be friends with a bunch of different people for a bunch of different reasons. And that can be okay. Yeah. And they, they're, they're starting to wrap their heads around this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, what's interesting. I, and, and I love this quality about Lucia. Like I really, really am so impressed because she goes to an all girls school and I definitely think she learned a lot from there, but you know, I, two things. One is, I believe that you have to let your kids kind of go through the fire to find their yeah. place. So I didn't really in seventh and eighth grade get involved in the little minutia of like arguments. I feel like they have to figure that yeah. out. She did this and this just happened or this person. I was like, okay, I would listen. And then I'd say, well, I'm sure you'll figure it out, you know, or I'm sure there's a reason you can find out for that. I didn't get involved. And I think that that was really helpful it doesn't mean that I didn't close the door to her room and be like, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But or I, I'm going to kill somebody. Oh, yeah. Not really, but you know what oh, I mean. Totally. You crush like that 14 year old girl. Of course. <laughs> and you want to go to the floor. Who was mean to my <laughs> baby? Oh, yeah. You and I can completely turn like, uh, what's, what's that movie with when Melissa McCarthy goes bananas? Is it like, she goes, she goes completely crazy on the kid. Oh, was it her or was it, wait, 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 wasn't Melissa McCarthy? Yeah, I thought it was. Julian Moore. You're welcome no. to a very, very Jessica and Sasha moment where I just go, hmm? 
There was a movie where she goes, she goes crazy at the kid who's mad at her. I think it's the movie with Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, and it's like Steve Carell and Julianne Moore. Maybe it's Elizabeth. Anyway, doesn't matter. She goes crazy. <laughs> at school and she pulls him aside and is like do not talk to my kid that way do not do it she goes completely nuts at him and it's like whoa wait you have your people, uh, people telling you what this movie is this is 40. oh is that what it is I, I don't in this is 40 i remember her going crazy on leslie mann and paul rudd in the office and it's one of the funniest things ever so maybe that movie you should, should look at it on youtube it's but it must fucking hilarious Okay, that's, that's, anyway, that makes me oh, laugh. Wait, hold, I, hold on, someone else is saying Crazy Stupid Love. You know what? I was thinking Crazy Stupid Love, but I think it's This Is 40. So I think you're right. I think you're right. It's, it's both of them, guys. It's both of them. <laughs> so. <laughs> two things can be true. Two things can be true. So um, anyway, I was going to say two things. One is that I feel like not getting involved allows them to go through the fire so that they learn more about where, where they land, you know? Like, we all need to kind of find our... Like there's there's so many situations that are like I, I I like people you know that I get along with many groups of people but I don't always feel like comfortable everywhere and that's okay like so I always have said the same thing to Lucia which is like hey if that's how they're behaving like you should just take that in that doesn't feel good for you find something else to do find another person to talk to yeah and like take your space right and but I think the quality that she has is forgiveness. She really doesn't hold on to things. She totally forgives people for whatever. And maybe it's like, she just kind of goes, yeah, yeah. She was like that, whatever. It's such, a, it's such an incredible quality. Oh I, my God. I, it's such an incredible quality. I, I struggle with that a little bit. Like I, even when people apologize right away, I'm a little bit like, mm-hmm, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I don't like this. Older. I, I have lots of grudges as a, as a team. My cousin. No, and the, well, my, my I, biggest move, my biggest move was I would just punish them with my silence. Totally. <laughs> that was me. Do you think that's like an only child thing? I always did that. Well, I don't know, but it's also just highly avoidant and sort of unsophisticated. So I feel like hopefully we've grown out of it. Um, wait, so yeah. you have, you, are, are you seeing all the people, things that people are saying? Because of course I yeah. get distracted. I was just going to tell you, but, first of all, I just want to say from Brazil to Germany, to Mexico, to wherever. You guys are amazing. We're so happy that you're showing up. And what I love is all the love going towards my bestie Jessica here. Lots of Grays fans, but also just Jessica, you're amazing. You are like- Oh, we don't need to, you're, need to read those comments. I actually was just gonna say, maybe people have some questions for you or I. Oh, but what I what I love is that, um, first of all, and I was gonna say the same thing, same thing, you look like sunshine. The eclipse did I, you. I have sunshine beating on my face right now. <laughs> no, but your hair, your blonde, you look so <laughs> like, you know, California. Well, because this isn't, because this isn't a real person, I actually didn't have to take a shower. Because believe you me, if you saw me in person, you'd be like, I didn't take a shower either. And I, it's okay. That's what we're, uh, that's what it's about. It's, it's Tuesday cat. morning. It's cat. Tuesday morning. Um, does anyone have questions? Let's answer some questions about, well, first of all, I'll ask you this and then we can answer questions too. Did you have a great time going back to Gray's? Did you have the same trailer? Did it smell the same? Did you have this eat the same thing at craft service? Like what's it like going back after you've had a little break? Cause I kind of um, went to routines that I had at that same place. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I loved going back. I, um, I did, I, I did not have the same trailer. I, everybody orders from my Postmates now, which was great. I was like, awesome. Cause again, when I come back to Los Angeles, I have, to, I completely have things that I have to eat. Like I have to have Jones on third Chinese chicken salad. And I have to have the turkey BLT there. And I have to have the salad that has the, um, and not the salad, the little sandwich with the brie and the ham and ooh, yum. And then, um, <laughs> I just have, you don't all have brie and ham no, I in didn't. New York. No, I do. It was not the same though. It's not the same. So yes, I, but it was, it was incredible. And it was just, I mean, every time I turned a corner, there was someone who I hadn't seen in so long. And there's a lot of things like you, there are actual like work friends that you have when you're at work and, yeah. and when you're outside of work, you might have completely different, you know, lives or live in different areas. And so you wouldn't be seeing them. And so it was so great to see all them. And I was very happy. Somebody just asked, what is a Chinese chicken salad? Ooh, Chinese Jones on third is a restaurant in Los Angeles on third. And the woman who started it, its name is Joan. <laughs> and she, and she has, 
what I think is a famous Chinese chicken salad. It's the most delicious dressing, and yeah, it's just a really yummy lettuce and chicken and and kind of a kind of a I, I would say I mean I don't know if it has soy in it, but there's kind of like a creamy. It's delicious Japanese style dressing on the chicken. That's very good. I very love yummy. it. Very yummy. Very yummy. Turn into the crispy rice uh, thing on it. I yeah. Whatever. But that's just yeah. me. But it's oh, I just got a Taylor Swift favorite song question. Okay, what do you listen? To? You know them all. I was gonna say, do you listen to her like in your car? No, I do not listen to her in my okay, car. Okay, okay, that's okay, that's okay, it's okay, I, it's okay. I want to say two things. One is the best experience ever going to the Eras tour with Jessica and with Lucia. But like Jess and Lucia know every lyric of everything and so they were definitely just screaming their lungs out and i mean you went a couple of times because you took your girl. i did i did i did i'm, I'm gonna go i'm gonna go again too okay so oh. here's how here's how i feel about taylor swift because i'm because i'm seeing all these questions i feel that taylor swift and all of her songs and all of her eras are the gifts that keep on giving because at any given time i have a different favorite song um but uh right now right now um, oh God, I'm trying to think. What is my favorite right now? I have to say, I just got out of a big reputation phase, so I don't know. But anyways, I love it. You, you're, you know what? You, you made me a Swifty because by going to that concert and having that experience and watching just the sheer joy and love that that woman brings to everybody. I mean, from I, little girls, four year olds to ninety year olds jumping, I know. singing. It was like kind of amazing and i remember in our little box hunter schaefer was there with her sisters oh my and god hunter those and sisters were hilarious uh, they're amazing i said we did you oh no yeah we were together we saw her that night and and i told her her sisters were so funny but hunter and i were the only ones that kind of didn't know every song so we were a little bit behind you guys and i have okay. all these videos of you just from the back you guys just oh my crying. god so good oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, and I am, and people have been noticing, I am definitely in, like, my teenage girl era, <laughs> my own personal, um, between, between Taylor Swift and Olivia, um, but again, it's like, Olivia, you went to see Olivia, how, was that amazing? I, I, I just love her. love her. I love her, and I have to thank Instagram for her. I have to thank Instagram for her, because when she first started, um, uh, I think Good For You had come out, and it was on the radio all the time, and the girls started listening to it, and they don't have social media at all and so they if they want to look at something they look at it on my phone and I said can we look at Olivia Rodrigo and I said yeah and they said will you follow her and I said of course and so I went to go follow her and you know when you follow when you go to follow someone that already follows you it says follow back and when it when I, when I pressed on it and it came up follow back I mean truly we screamed so loud I think I threw my phone I was like oh my god she follows me oh <laughs> it was a it was a full-blown fangirl moment and then I followed her back and then we we actually just we were chit-chatting in our DMs so I, I guess that's a case where I slid into somebody's DMs you slid um I slid into her DMs but I just adore her and I just I love I love the young um female poet because that's what I think all these song writers are and I I think that they are just so magical and that there's all this room for them to express and tell stories and bring you into a moment and then imagine a moment and i just think that the 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 storytelling is so strong and i think that that's what um and then i mean listen then when you combine it with the most incredible rhythms and and music it just becomes like i don't know i watch i watch myself and i watch the girls just really be um be i don't know Know what the word is soothe seen um held I, all of the things it's just all good i love all the female power of it i mean when we were coming up it was like you know madonna and then there was like a lot of guys but you know madonna was kind of that that uh that first person and i remember going to her concert at 16 and it was just like everything but it's really powerful to see these girls i also feel like um there's just uh it's a it's just I feel like there, there's a lot of personal storytelling, as you said, that's going on. Yeah. That's really fun to follow. It's great. For sure. Oh, so good. And and you are, you know, dancing queen. So you love to rock. <laughs> <laughs> You're a far 
a better dancer than I am, but uh, I, I dance with abandon. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm great. If I saw a video, probably less great. And, and just for the record, neither one, neither of us care. When we went to Taylor Swift, we were oh. dancing through those hallways with the guards that worked there. They were yeah, 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 for sure. But I remember, I remember early a, a, a while ago. I mean, Tracy Anderson, who we both love, um, workout guru of the of the world. Uh, she and we used to go to her classes, and there was like the the portion of them that was like you know lifting with like little tiny weights, and then there was dancing, and the lifting of the t little tiny weights totally had down. I was down to party, had it, did it, sweat it, whatever, whatever. And then it would transition over to the cardio part of the class where there was definitely um, choreographed dancing. And that is just where Sasha Alexander just sings. She flies. All of a sudden she is like fucking all across the floor. And I am like in the back row. Like I don't, I just have no idea what's happening. None, not one but, single. But you know it's like it's my soul like i actually now was thinking that i want to get a dance teacher and just dance more you should you should you can i cannot i can free dance but i cannot uh choreograph dance listen but i think choreograph dance is so good for all of us because it's a, just a good memory thing like the thing with tracy that i liked is that you can't learn it all in a day but months and months and months of repeating it and repeating it you sort of get to do you know i think that's the whole idea of it but I get yeah, even with even with months and months and months I did not get it. But yes, thank you for reminding me of the months and months I tried. Months. <laughs> it took me months too. I think she does that on purpose. It's not really something that you're supposed to pick up after the first time you do it. It's supposed to like take a long yeah, time yeah. to. Yeah, I know, I know. Do it. So I know. You know, it's not an easy thing. Um, so what else? Well, I guess we're gonna like. Do you want to take a question? Let's see. Da 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 da. Anybody have, well, there's lots of questions for Jess. There was something asking about what's your favorite sweet treat? Hmm. Um, not, I'm actually, I'm more of a, um, I find that people either go savory or sweet. I'm a little more savory. So I'm a little bit more like, I, I love like a good, like a, like a grilled cheese would be fantastic treat for me. <laughs> um, but a sweet treat, I would say that I definitely am like a, uh, I'm a peanut butter and chocolate type gal. Um, and haagen chocolate ice cream is probably my favorite thing in the world. My girls and I were eating that last night. And we had to, we have to talk about it every time we eat it, too. We're like, this is just the best ice cream. So, yeah. Great. Um, I love ice cream. All kinds of ice cream. They opened a place called Bacha de Latte. It's a gelato place um, nearby here. And uh, it's so good. The, mm. the line. I can't wait to try. Yeah, it's really, really good. Arizona, your vac vac favorite vacation spot? Oh, anywhere with my people. I mean, I, I, I do love, um, I do, I, I either love, a, I either love a beach or, but, but you know, my favorite family vacation is actually going skiing. Is I it? love taking the kids skiing. Yeah, it really is. And we've never, never gone skiing together, I don't think. Once, 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 a long time ago. Well, we met you. We didn't go together. But I like the, um, I like the all doing an activity together. And then I love, um meeting for lunch <laughs> and i love being done at the end of the day like sure. pasta so much lots of pasta Careful. lots of pasta to add that what another another key to longevity and friendships is sharing our food yeah yeah we love oh my gosh little yes. bit yes yeah yeah yep. yep. and i am someone who definitely like when you like whenever we make a date i'm always i, I definitely center it around the food <laughs> I'm like, um, can we meet for dinner? Because I really want this. I love dinner. Uh, you know what I was just thinking too is I just redid my pantry, and I was thinking about we were talking about snacks. You're very, uh, you're very organized pantry, and I called you when I was redoing mine. Like, what baskets should I get? What things? Because I love how snacks are organized. Like it's so pleasing to walk into one's pantry and see like your power bars or your chips, like whatever it is that you have and be able to find them. I wish I had that as a kid. I didn't have them. Oh, well, I was, I was just about to say, I think that it's because like being organized makes me feel safe. That sounds crazy a little bit, but it kind of makes sense. I, I it just, when things are, when things are all over the place or disorganized, I just, I don't, I'm like, I'm focusing on that. Um, but when things are where they're supposed to be and organized, then I feel safe. And so I actually think to myself, 
given that I am so organized, I always wonder, cause it wasn't like that when I was a kid. And I do wonder, oh my gosh, someone's asking if I still ride base. So that's the, sorry, I just caught that side of the corner of my eye. Um, uh, yes, we do still have base. So, um, I wonder if my kids are gonna be like that. Like, I wonder if I'm going to go into their, uh, pantry and it's going to be like a hot mess. Somebody just wrote funny because Arizona is a mess. Is she? Is she? Is she a mess? Wow, guys. <laughs> you guys have another impression of her. I think she's very much together. <laughs> we like playing the opposites of what we are. Um, you guys may or may not know, but Jessica and I, I, I guest starred on a show that Jessica was starring in. It was a really fun comedy called Thick and Thin. Thick and Thin with Paul. Appell from SNL yeah. and it was really fun and I was and I was pregnant or just start like just found out I was pregnant and I was really nauseous on the set and Jessica went from literally acting starring in every single scene she would leave the set and go and get me peanut butter and jelly and Gatorade and be taking care of my nausea while she was acting so yeah. that's the kind of friend you are, my love. I love you. True. I'm a I'm a caretaker. Um, I I I'm learning how to not try to fix everything and solve everything. Um, because that's actually it seems it always seemed in my life like that was a really positive trait, and um, sometimes it is, but all the time it's not. <laughs> and we can't. And we can't. And we have no. Yes. And also, it implies that someone else isn't able to fix or solve or sometimes you know what sometimes that's the hard part right parenting and marriage relationships friendships whatever it's like it's it's hard to sit with someone in their sad or mad because that's that that's tough right and so you just want to get out of it you're like where is the emergency exit i would like to leave now <laughs> and i figured out my super highway to the emergency exit was to just like jump into action and fix it. Yeah. Um, that's not what was going on with us. I just wanted to make sure you weren't nauseous because it was the fetal baby Lutia. Oh, but I just remember sitting in a fetal position and you being like having to go be like, hold on one second, they're on me right now. And then running out to do these scenes and then come back and take care of when I was- Well, I would also say, by the way, in terms of advice, not that anyone's asking my advice, but I would say that it's one of the things that I actually don't talk about very much. I truly think that sometimes if you want something done you should give it to the busiest person i find that the more when i have when i have purpose and i have direction and i'm and i and i'm and i have a lot of things to go from and to that i actually am probably the person that's like that's when i'm most ready to do more like i because i'm like in go mode yeah um and i think that that's that's a big part of me yeah there's a lot Lots of big parts of you, and I just love your face. I love your, your face I so. Your face. I get to see you today, and this is so much fun to just be able to just hang because I don't know. We don't always FaceTime because, like I said, we're like driving and catching up. Yeah, so yeah. more FaceTimes, more FaceTimes. I love you so, so much. I love you for for um, just checking in and doing coming from yes from with my beverage. Yes, water beverage. Beverage. That's all right. You're in, you're, you're and then you're gonna now you're gonna have to come on my podcast. Yes, I'll do your idea. You're gonna come on my podcast. Yes. Do you want to mention a little bit about it? With you guys coming coming Carl? soon. Coming soon. I mean, hopefully, I believe that it's gonna be June third. So that's okay. exciting. Yeah. I cannot wait. And she's the cutest. And the two of you together are amazing. Oh my. Gosh, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have sisters too. We all look like we could play sisters. Yes, 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 and yes, for sure. Davis, we can get Vicky and we can do four yes. sisters. We can have four yes, yes yeah. definitely. No, it's gonna be really fun. And I think it's gonna be um I think you know there's there's a big piece of it that involves um you know all the people who who care about um the show and our friendship and 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 we're gonna have the opportunity for you know calls and and interactivity. So it's gonna be I think I'm really excited about it. I'm so excited for you. And you are like also, you're also a person who's always reading and super yeah. curious about so many things. And you're always well read and you always have something that you're that you're doing or thinking about. So often our conversations are always about all sorts of topics, whether we're learning more about our parenting stuff or the world or ways to just 
I don't want to say better ourselves, but educate ourselves and evolve. Yeah, grow. But I mean, I feel the same. Yeah. And you and I, you and I are so funny because I, we really are like that. Um, that there's an unspoken tethering between you and I, where oftentimes whatever I'm reading or whatever I'm thinking about or whatever I will say to you, like, have you heard of it? You're like, I was just reading that, or I was just thinking that, or I was just talking to somebody. So it's funny how that, you know, that connection where it really does, um, it is really very strong. And I think it's um, so awesome because oftentimes when you're reading the same thing, you can see different things in it. And I love that some of the things that sit squarely in my blind spot, you see instantly. And so you'll bring them up and you'll be like, did you see it this way? And I was like, no, I didn't see it that way. But now I do because of how you saw it. And so I think that that's just, I think that that's so much fun. And again, I don't know. I, I think because the theme of this has been friendship, I think that the thing that I would want to hit home the most is for any for any and all who who care about what I think of it, it's 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 that you have you need friends. You you actually need them. You don't. Yes, you want them. And I think you go through different stages of like you know being a like wanting to like tally up how many you have and using it as power or feeling that you know more is better or less is better, whatever it is. But that is that is outside of what I think is the most important part of friendship, which is that you need it. Like the need for connection, the need for being able to talk out loud, to process things, to um, be vulnerable and, and work on the bravery and courage that it takes to live with a small audience first and one that you trust and that will give you, you know, an honest um, feedback. And, and, the, and I think that that's been a giant part of our friendship too, is that like neither one of us are yes people like we don't we've always we've always challenged each other or or said you know I, I i understand why you see it like that i don't agree and i i kind of see it like this and that is like graduate level friendship when you can totally. hear that and and be okay with it yeah and 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 even be irritated or you know whatever it is um and i think that that is is just so important and i think that you know it's it's interesting i i i don't know where this fact came from but someone brought it to me and i believe it um which is that and by the way just to be very clear i i i think gender differences are interesting to look at because i think that they help us understand how to make each like allow for growth in each in each gender if you will um so i don't ever say this stuff like one is bad or one one is better or, or lesser or whatever but it was an interesting statistic about longevity and just life between males and females and females outlive males. And one of the reasons that they ascribed was because men don't report and men don't talk about things mm -hmm. as often, or even in a health situation, like if something's going wrong, they don't talk about it. Or they, mm -hmm. And again, that's a generalization and, and, you know, have, have, it, have with it what you will. Um, but I think that again, just the processing and the understanding and the talking, and I, I, I wish for all genders and, you know, all, all people all together to just be able to have more people to talk to people that they trust, um, people who have their best interests at heart, uh, and who assume the best of them and we'll just be on along for the ride and the journey and the, and the, and the, and the ways in which we can all grow. It's a beautiful word, Jess. Eh. And I, I, I know, but really I, I, I take them in because you know that I, I feel like connection is just one of the things that makes me like, just, I absolutely need, it's like my medicine, Yeah, which is part of the reason I want to do this your, and your podcast is going to do the same. Like, I feel like it's so important to connect in a time where we, we, you know, we seemingly feel closer because we're connecting through social and yeah. all this stuff. In some ways, people also feel much more lonely and much more further apart. And so yes, and I want, I want that to, I really, I want that to end. Can we make that our mission? Like, let's all, let's all make that our mission. Like that needs to end yeah. this loneliness and this idea that you are, that you are going it alone. You, you know, no, I just, I can't, like, can't wrap my head around that. And I would not allow for that in, in mm -hmm. my own life where I had any sort of control. I mean, I really want everyone to feel like they have, you know, not just someone, but many. And, and hopefully, like I said, I mean, one of our, one of our goals on this podcast is to just include and have people be able to, you know, call in and, and connect and, and, and obviously always try to, you know, the top note will always be humor. Cause that's sort of how we, we, she and I see things. Um, but 
there's so many, there's so much important work to do too and understanding and thinking, and again, just not feeling alone. Cause yeah. no one, no one is alone. No uh, one should be alone. Jessica, somebody was just asking. So Jessica's uh, podcast with Camilla Luddington is um, on iHeartRadio and it will be announced like everything, every detail about it will be announced very, very soon, but you did yes. announce that you guys are doing it. And so all the details of it are coming at you, but I'm really glad Jess to, that you're doing that. Cause I do believe that it is, um, it is so healing for all of us. And I, I am so lucky and grateful that we have had so many years of friendship. We were able to meet early in our twenties and be able to go through this life together and be able to help each other and learn from each other. And one of the things that, um, about you that I absolutely love is just that I, I think that you and I have both been career women, but we have always had this love of family that we both yeah. share. And, yeah. and both found, which I'm super proud to say, we both found a balance between prioritizing, you know, our marriage or children and also balancing our work. Sometimes they're not exactly the way we always wanted in percentages in our pie. And sometimes there's more of something, less of something. It doesn't matter. But one of the things I love about you is that you've never been blinded by this just sheer kind of like, I need to be, you know, relevant every moment of my life. Like, you're not like that. And I love that about you. And no. I step back. You don't answer your phone if you're with your kids and that's your priority to be there and be present with them and do that. And that's why they're doing so well. And, and that's the biggest blessing ever. And I, I really admire that about you yeah. and all the, I feel like that's something that we never questioned. It wasn't something that, you know, I knew that you were not prioritizing the things that actually um, are, are the deepest things to you, your, your family and all that. So I'm just really glad everyone's really happy that you are um, back out in our- And I, I know, look at me, look at me. Am I relevant yet? Whoop, 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 yeah. whoop. <laughs> um, So I love you. And thank I love you. you. I love you. Podcast and I can't wait to see you again. Will you please come out again? And, and Oh my gosh, yes, yes. I, I actually think that I might be there next week, but I'll talk to you on the side about that. Don't worry about <laughs> everything it's yeah, like, drop everything <laughs> tell everybody to buy back what are we gonna eat we'll figure out our our eating menu, our menu or yeah. whatever all the all things we'll eat all of it i love you so much and i'm so proud of you i love that you're making time and doing this and bringing on all these cool people and i think that it's so much fun to watch mm -hmm. and see and hear you you are a wise 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 woman thank you so much thank you i'm just happy to get everyone together and it's so fun to see everybody from everywhere like, I know, I know, so it's so cool, great. it's so cool. There's been like oh. India and Brazil and it's crazy, it's crazy, it's so cool, it's so cool. And by the way, we only get to do what we do because of this, because of this connection, because of people who, you know, who do want to listen in or care or, you know, want to watch. And I'm, that is never, ever, ever lost on me that I would truly be alone in a room talking to myself if, if, if not for that. So I am so grateful to all the people who came today to check in with us. Thank you. And to you. Lots of love. Uh, I hope to see you soon. Big kiss to everybody, okay? Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. If I can turn it off.